Traditionally, for years, we've prescribed Ortho-K as a refractive correction, an alternative to glasses and contact lenses or refractive surgery. But when we've done that, our goal really has been to provide clear vision good distance vision. And it was kind of a a lucky accident that we found that while our patients, our children were wearing ortho-K to correct their myopia, it slowed their rate of progression in myopia. So I like to call this a lucky side effect. Now, what we have found over time is that people respond differently to this, that some people still progress during ortho-K, some people completely stop. And that's where these mean numbers come into all the uh, study. But we also find that if we use Ortho-K, the same design is not necessarily the same in each patient. So we have to kind of customize this. And so we have found through some research that there are design modifications that can be made to enhance the myopia management effect. But the same way that we don't really prescribe the same spectacle lens for every patient, we certainly should not, when we're considering myopia management, prescribe the same Ortho-K design for each patient. Individual differences to the response on the topography and the subjective response exist for a variety of designs in different patients. It may be dependent on the baseline Ks, their refraction, pupil size, anterior chamber depth. So the slide, the picture there is to demonstrate that it, this is not a cookie cutter thing. It has to be custom designed for the individual patient. The one thing we also know about ortho and for those of you who have not done it, you may be fearing wearing a lens overnight is a high risk, but ortho-K does have the potential for complications. But in reality, studies have shown and in clinics, most doctors have not experienced major complications. There are very few complications and it is less than other modalities of wear. Uh, The complications have been shown to be able to be minimized if you can really ensure that the patient is compliant with the lens care you prescribe and compliant with the follow-up care that they're getting from you to assure that everything is progressing well. So keeping the lens clean, caring for it properly, wearing it the way it's prescribed, all critical to minimizing the rates of complications, which to begin with are low. Relative to safety, uh, Dr. Bullimore uh, was the uh, principal of a retrospective study on ortho-K, finding about 7.7 incidents of risk of MK for every 10,000 years of wear. So one in every 1,300 patient years of wear, and that's much less than overnight wear for silicone hydrogel wear. And again, the potential problems that could come up with Ortho-K with good fitting, good follow-up, and compliance from the patient. When you start Ortho-K, what does it do to the patient's eye? Well, if anybody who's studied this, you know about the changes that it thins the epithelium centrally. Average central epithelial thickness between about 50 and 55 microns, and it thins it somewhere between 10 and 20 microns, depending on the prescription, how much Ortho-K effect you're looking for. It also shows a thickening of epithelium under the reverse curve. Basically, these are OCT maps of just epithelial thickness, not the topography, not the curvature, but the thickness of the epithelium on the far left. And it shows where that has reduced in the blue. And uh, again, these are lower right. These are epithelial maps before and after ortho-K. Again, on the far right, you can see where the epithelium is significantly thinner and where it thickens in the area under the reverse curve. In addition to changing the central corneal epithelial thickness, The big changes that we see with our topographer is the changes in the topography that are characteristic that we've become familiar with. And we do find these characteristic patterns where you want to see the blue in the very center showing the area of consistent central flattening to provide good central visual acuity and what we call the classic red ring, which is the steepening area around that. What we also find, for example, in this particular case is that the changes that you see in the topography map and the actual curvature changes are not one-to-one for the refraction, meaning in this particular case, we don't necessarily see for a five diopter myo, five diopters have changed centrally. It went from a 4208 to a 3826. So a little less than four diopters of change created over five diopters of refractive improvement. In addition, what else does it do to the eye? It reduces myopia, obviously. It also, while it's doing that, it increases spherical aberrations and other higher order aberrations. And again, 
that is another area that is being investigated in terms of its contribution to the slowing of axial elongation. Certainly, visual acuity unaided is far better. One study showed 92% of ortho-K patients. Uh, that's a study that I did. 2025 or better, 90% subjectively reported equal or better vision than with their soft lenses. In addition to the refractive changes, as we mentioned before, ortho-K creates relative peripheral myopic defocus. So centrally, it corrects the vision very, very well. So the patient is seeing very well in the distance, can function all day with no correction. But peripherally, it creates a image shell that peripheral to the macula focuses in front of the retina, and that is thought to be a very strong signal to slowing the progression of the myopia. So now, how does the patient perceive this? What does the patient get out of all of this? Well, number one, this is a, a pet subject for me, is the improved vision-related quality of life. The fact that they don't have to wear any correction during the course of the day is huge. No waking hours correction. Some of the things that are a little uh, more intangible that happen with them, basically it, it's been measured that they have a better self-image, they have less activity restrictions, their eyes are more comfortable during the day that they don't have to wear correction or glasses or contact lenses. They're not as worried about their eyes about losing their correction or damaging or getting injured while they have their glasses on. And overall, they report higher overall satisfaction with their total vision correction. This is something that I feel very strongly about is that which is a greater risk, prescribing ortho-K or not prescribing some type of form of myopia management? Then the risks of ortho-K is it just requires more office visits, a little risk of abrasions and complications, and that they require more care. But if you don't manage that myopia, they're going to continue to be fast progressors. They're going to have this increased risk of complications and be wearing glasses that are not real attractive. So why ortho-K? No correction needed during waking hours, better vision-related quality of life. The myopia management effect that you are creating with Ortho-K is in play 100% of the time of their waking hours. And you can start these kids younger. So an overall summary, Ortho-K is good at slowing axial elongation. Patients report great and improved vision-related quality of life. It is safe and it has the unique advantages as a excellent myopia management intervention. And even if they're using other methods, glasses or atropine and soft lenses, they still need to wear something during the day. With Ortho-K, no correction worn during the day. Thank you.